do you guys like subclasses to go with your backgrounds? Well, how about like a whole bunch of them? Offered by today's sponsor, the Grim Hollow Player's Guide. The Circle of Mutation, the Madness Domain, the College of Dirges, the Wretched Bloodline, and a bunch of others are just the beginning of what Grim Hollow has to offer. Metal dice and coins straight from Etheris, a dark wood chest to keep them in, and a bunch of high quality paintable miniatures are all here to further your goblin gathering hobbies. And the price is very generous for the quality of Ghostfire's products. Look at these minis. Look at the fire that actually comes out for real. Did I mention the cinematic? That's really good too. Go check it out if you'd be so kind, and thanks again to Ghostfire for supporting myself as well as the community. Welcome to some more backgrounds, the show where I look at a handful of backgrounds that your character might have, and then explain them to myself while you watch and make fun of me. Starting with the Entertainer. As an entertainer, you have a small set of useless, impractical skills that people like to point and stare at. Things like telling fantasy tales, imagining monsters that don't exist, making music, writing, performing skits, all things that nobody needs to do. But lucky for both of us, you can regulate and monetize that shit. Entertainers have a small set of routines that everybody knows at least one of. These common shticks include acting, dancing, fire eating, Jesting. You know, surprisingly, about 90% of my job is just showing up. People just laugh. And then I leave. <laughs> Juggling music. Poetry. The beauty of love is fleeting. The fuels of the earth are depleting. But fear not for the land we love and extend your reach to the stars above. Jesse, James, Team Rocket blasting off at the speed of light. Surrender now, or prepare to fight. Meowth. That's right. Singing, storytelling, and tumbling. These spicy gents and gwents can always find a place to perform, and they get housing because of it, but only if they never stop performing. The old familiar sting of the non-stop grind. As artists of the performing variety, they all have artistic ideals, which is to say they're either insane or full of themselves. While well, one commits murders, an illegal action may I remind you, and sees the corpses that they create as works of art, another could be a clout-chasing copycat with the same juggling routine as Will Ferrell. There is also a variant of entertainers known as gladiators. They're like musicians, where the music they make sounds like your bones cracking, and then at the end of the show your bones are broken. Folk heroes. As a folk hero, you used to suck, or maybe you still do. Point is, you were a nobody, and then you did something cool, and now people like you. The entire background is actually whatever thing that you did, and all the ones the book listed are mostly the same. You stood up to a big stinky meanie, and everyone clapped. You fought a big scary monster when nobody else would and everyone clapped. Or maybe a fancy fairy showed up and told you you were destined for greatness and that your dad was actually that planet from Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and then everyone clapped their asses. As boring and potentially tastelessly classic as this background is, it's in a lot of media. One Punch Man, My Hero Academia, which is actually also One Punch Man, all the movies I watched as a kid, and also the brainwashing we experienced as kids, where people told us that we were more special than all the other kids that they told were more special than us. You know, the planted seed of tribalism. Folk heroes can always find a place to chill among the people that clapped for them, just like the entertainer and the acolyte. Coming from a humble but not too humble beginning, these meat chunks have classic heart of gold ideals, or greedy ones depending on how they turned out and how they were raised, and maybe their genetics. Guild guys. You're like the entertainer, but you have practical skills instead of performative ones. You don't waste your time running around trying to earn your daily bread. Instead, you went to school. Maybe your parents work for a guild, or maybe you applied as a wee lad, or maybe you were one of those cool doorstep orphans that a master blacksmith took in that have the whole up dynamic going on. 
And just like modern schools, your life was so incredibly restricted by the Guild of Directors that you had no choice but to master a skill. And your only teacher was also doing the job that you needed to learn, so life was hard and no fun for a while. But now you've got skills to pay the bills. The one skill that you mastered because diverse portfolios did not exist in feudal society. A few examples of skills that you could master would be alchemy, botany, metalwork and smithing, winemaking and beer brewing, handwriting or calligraphing, woodworking and carving, map making, cobbling, bacon, bake on, cook out, cook off, something with fire and glass, bedazzling, skin works, rock cutting, graphic design, pottery, boat, underwater basket weaving, and hydroponic husbandry where you create cows out of vitamin water. Or there is also the merchant variant, where instead of skills you offer a storefront or a nice hefty cart, and a mule friend. You should pick the mule. As a member of a guild, which is just a crafting cult, you have homies. They'll offer housing, food, temporary jobs, and you can use their tremendous political lobbying power to get you out of prison if they like the crime that you committed. Just remember to pay your dues. And that's basically the, the triad of backgrounds. Bye.